sign of the oh, miracle. Okay. The way they okay. went to the West. Hello, okay. um, we are back live in the afternoon. It is 1230 on Monday, May 6th in Senate Economic Development, Housing and General Affairs. This should be our last segment of the day, um, final walkthrough and vote of H704. Um, this is streaming live right now on the House. It's here. No, it's oh, here. here. It's oh, here. good. So. Right. We are streaming within Senate Economic Development. People can watch. It will be on our website. And hopefully this won't take too long because everybody has other committees to get to. And it's our final bill that we need to vote out. Okay. And could the host make me a um, yeah, yeah, co-host? Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so for the record, I'm Damon Leonard from the Office of Legislative Council. Our editors are working on this as we speak. So if you see a typo in here, uh, be forgiven. Please, please understand that we uh, finished working on the compromise moments ago. Um, if we still had presses, this would be hot off the press. Uh, so um, this is going to be draft 4.1. It's important to note the compromise uh, is wider ranging than we were discussing this morning. So let me walk you through that. Part one is in the enforcement section. We have added a subdivision saying that the provisions of this section and a claim of retaliation for asserting or exercising any rights provided pursuant to this section would only be enforced pursuant to 21 BSA 495 BA1, which is the attorney general provision. So it would take away the private right of action and leave it as just AG enforcement in this case. So I will let the advocates talk to that. We uh, haven't talked about private right of action. It was, it was in there as the default enforcement. The concern was- I thought the enforcement was a complaint. It is complaint driven. Complaint to the AG or a complaint filed in Superior Court as part of a private right of action. So this takes away the private right of action. The concern, as I understood it, uh, is that in this case, you know, the AG is going to enforce uh, even handedly and consistently because of, and they're going to only enforce cases where there's a genuine violation. And you won't, uh, there were concerns about. Uh, lawsuits being filed either to harass an employer or for cases that were not a genuine violation, but which the employer would defend in any way. Um, and so, so does the, this go straight to the consumer? To who, where, yes, what division would this go to? Yeah, this goes to, that's a good question. That'll be for the AG's office to decide which division. Other anti-discrimination provisions are enforced by the Civil Rights Unit, which is Julio and Emily Adams. Julio Thompson and Emily Adams are yeah. the two attorneys. Uh, they enforce the other provisions of this subchapter. Um, so it's B. B yeah. And so this is existing enforcement language it's just taking away the private right of action piece of this yeah, so and that's not great but there we are okay and what else so the second change and carrie how do you feel about that uh, we're okay with that okay. carrie brown we're not quite sure yeah so uh the second change is to Again, update the Vermont job opening. I'm sorry, we're getting into more and more subdivisions here, but- I, it, I thought we were really just working on the remote worker piece. We are, we are. Oh, okay. So the definition is in Vermont job opening. So the first is to clarify that it is, uh, it is a job that is either located uh, in Vermont, or, and I'm realizing now that the grammar's gonna change here, but performed remotely, um, predominantly for an office or work location that is uh, a job that is performed remotely, that is predominantly for uh, an office or work location that is physically located in Vermont. Okay. Um, so the intent here is to get away from 
uh, examples of, for example, a, a hotel manager whose hotel chain is based in Vermont, um, a worker for National Life who works out of an office in Texas. Um, and so, uh, and uh, folks in sales who work for a Vermont company, uh, folks who uh, do service calls in a particular region of the company country for a company that's based in Vermont, et cetera. So it's trying to get these workers uh, out of there. Um, and then we're adding, oh. Just before, I thought. It, and there's missing language here, I'm sorry. We went too quickly. The language that's missing is supposed to say, uh, Vermont job opening does not include uh, a job that is performed uh, that is physically located outside of Vermont and that performs work that is predominantly for an office or work location that is physically one or more offices or work locations that are physically located outside Vermont. Sorry, that is that is the exception that is missing from this. So I will put so that into the draft. I had a different question, which is I thought under I-1, I guess, we were going to add physically or located in. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. Yeah. Um, so that, that so, so we are Roman at Roman at one will say physically located in Vermont. That right. And uh Rome at, and Roman then, at yes, Roman at Roman one, one has Roman one these one, one Roman numeral one, two, yeah. three. So. Um okay. Let me make some changes to the actual draft, which I don't have open because the editors are working on it. Um the let me go back just briefly to walk you through the other pieces and then you can hear from the advocates. We added a guidance and outreach section, uh, which requires on or before January 1, 25, the AG's office would publish guidance for employers and employees regarding the provisions of that law. Um, and it would publish the guidance on its website and coordinate with the Commission on Women and other stakeholders to conduct outreach and education regarding the provisions. I think that's good. That's a good addition. And then the final piece is the effective date moves out to July 1, so a year from now instead of six months from now, or seven months from now. So we're we're moving the effective date out from January 1 to July 1. Okay. Can you give us... Uh, we're finally all on the same page a little late. This is like the most extremely late, which is a little frustrating. I mean, cannabis was late, too. Uh, could, so... Given that I'm going to ask to vote on this with a new draft number, what can you just go over that exact language again? Uh, I'm fine with the guidance language, but the other pieces, it's right. It, Senator Clarkson, could I just, yeah, do you want comments? Because just on the guidance language, I think employers should be in there somewhere. I thought employers were stakeholders. guidance for oh, stakeholders. Employers. Okay, AG okay. does guidance to all stakeholders. All right. You know, like, it's yeah, pretty consultation with Commissioner on Women and other stakeholders. Okay, so yeah, that's employers and employee. I mean, it's all everybody should know, right? Um, so I'm sorry to ask, but given we're going to vote on this, uh, and it will be draft 5.1. Is that what you want to finish? Thank you, Ron. Okay. Hold on a second, please. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'm just texting my afternoon committee down the hall to say okay. we are Oh, boy. We have voted it out, Mike. No, you did? no, no. no. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. Sorry, we did. Yeah, so so what we call this final copy. copy for the to take upstairs. Great, there you go. And you, yeah. Do you have more than one? I do. Okay. Thanks, because Wendy's going to report it. And I have two things. Thank you. Ready, Yeah, thank you. 
So it's draft 2.3. We were wondering what it was going to be. We should have placed bets on There you go. Goodbye. Thank you, Mike. Do you have that report sheet? I do. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we all sat. It is straight. Yeah, it's uh, we are not quite there yet. Okay. Look, so I've done, I just We're got ready. the edits. I'm doing my best. We know that, and we are grateful. Very grateful for Ron that's coming to. What are you looking for? Oh, the actual bills in there. Uh, second or third, third drawer down on the left. Third drawer down on the left. Left. Yeah. Wendy, um, mm. in terms of getting a summary on the cannabis, Michelle and the might Yes. We may have to do this three minutes. Oh, I'll just have to be ready for everything tomorrow, right? So, uh, or, no, I don't assume. tomorrow. Okay. Well, tomorrow we'll probably do S30. Yeah. Ready for right. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good to clear the deck of S30. Get it back. Yes. Are you finding them, Ron? Well, finding them, just not finding one of your. Not finding this one, just 612, you're not finding it. We'll be here. That's me. 474. Well, the book house bills. Uh, right. Want me to text Magali? Well, I can do that. Or if she keeps the house bills. Did you find them? I've texted her to ask. Is it, it to the right? Yeah, that's her only drawer. All right. Let me share my screen. I, I just text her because I think her internet is saying. Okay. Let's see if she's hold on to that see if she responds. Yeah. Unless you have another way to. Yeah. All right. So the updated definition. Um, Vermont job opening, which I pulled up on the screen behind you. I apologize for everyone who has to crane their neck, is Vermont job opening means any position of employment that is either located in Vermont or a remote How about physically located? I'm sorry, physically located, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Good thing we're here. I'm just trying to lighten Appreciate that. Sorry. A bit of a uh, physically located in Vermont or a remote position that will predominantly perform work or an office or work location that is physically located in Vermont and is a position for which an employer is hiring, including 
positions that are open to both internal and external or both, or a uh, position for which current employees, the employer can transfer to or be promoted. Uh, just and go then, back to the, the change you made about the, the for a position that is physically located. Could you go back to that thank you? A remote position that would probably perform work for an officer work location that is physically does it that still not change the situation in which the work location, the boss is in Vermont, but all the work is done someplace else. Well, that is what the exception down below gets to. Okay. Vermont job opening does not include a position that is physically located outside of Vermont and that performs work that is predominantly for an officer work location that is physically located outside of okay. Vermont. Um, well, I don't know if that's an answer. One or more. Oh. Uh, should be offices or work locations that uh, are. Um, so the the reason that we put it this way is this would get at the individual who is a traveling salesperson or uh, does service calls or something like that. Those Ron, can you locations. let me in? I have to start driving. Um, Sorry, what? Can you let me oh, into the room? I need to start driving. I, 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 you're all set. You got admitted. Um, um, whoops. Um, okay. Um, and then, yeah, so this also addresses offices. So when you have, you know, folks who report back to a central office, even though they are working at offices, if their predominant place of work and the predominant work they're doing is for that office, yeah. So, we're we're basically looking at the balance here. Right. But but so the person who's working in New York or a Vermont company, does this are, are they they should be fine. So the, the question is, are they working remotely for a Vermont office? So for example, I'm a, an attorney who lives in the Catskills and I draft documents for a Vermont law firm. That does its work here. I don't, apart from my home office, there's no office or work site you know, that I perform work for in New York versus do I manage a hotel for a Vermont based hotel chain, but I manage their hotel in Rochester, New York. Yes. So what's this in the second condition? That the second one is covered by the exclusion. Okay. I work as the manager of that hotel chain is predominantly for that hotel chain, even though I may pre prepare quarterly reports for the home office or something like that, okay. um, or occasionally have meetings with my regional manager, et cetera. Okay. So what about the Rochester Hotel, though? Why? The Rochester Hotel will not need to post a salary range for that individual. Even though they are well, employed by Vermont? They would under New York law. So bad example, but let's <laughs> say, let's say Cleveland, Ohio, okay? Because uh, Cleveland rocks, as we know. Um, <laughs> see, I'm trying to light the mood too. It's definitely on the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm adding finals. laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, so Cleveland uh, Hotel, uh, but it's owned by a Vermont uh, parent company. I am predominantly performing work at that Cleveland Hotel, even if I have to have meetings with and prepare reports for the home office in Vermont. So how would they advertise that job and click just, just as a job opening? Just and, they, a job. and as a best practice, they could do a salary range if they want. They could. Nothing for them prevents them from doing okay. it. So uh, if they're in a good um, habit of doing best practices in the United States of America at this moment, they would do that. But we're not forcing them to. Right. Gotcha. Um, and unless and until Ohio decides to change its law, they do not have to post that salary range. Okay. So does this satisfy everybody's concerns in the room? I hope because we have 10 minutes that we need to get people up. To so I don't want to speak for people, but I do want to be clear that this was just a compromise on the language. And I'm not sure that everyone loves the bill. Correct. So I'm sorry they don't love the bill. It was got you know, huge vote of approval in the House and, every, and we had I think, I think that. That this is absolutely unnecessary. I think it is one more interference in the employer employee relationship. The protection of people who may have been discriminated against exists in our law right now. Uh, this is going to add to just 
marginally the cost of advertising for every job that gets advertised in print in Vermont. And again, there is enough wiggle room between the salary, the two ranges of salaries that anybody who wants to discriminate on the basis of sex or any other reason still has the ability to discriminate in exactly the same way. I think it's an unnecessary bill and I'm not I'm not favor of it. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I actually couldn't convince you. I'm sorry. Carrie's wonderful memos haven't no, convinced I appreciate, you. I appreciate the input. And, and I think and we I'm have... Sorry, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm, well, I'm sorry. I think it's going to make great differences, particularly for our BIPOC populations and for women. I think this is best practices now around the state, around the country. And I I am very happy we're doing this. And Ashley Bartley did a great job in the House promoting it and, and reporting it on the floor. And I'm Sorry, we don't have support, but I would call the question given our time and yeah. propose that we vote out uh, draft 4.1. 4.2. 4.2. Yep. 4.2 favor. And I will send that to the committee and Magali and Ron. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Are we ready? All right. I'll pick all these. So, Senator Brock? No. Senator Clarkson? Yes. Senator Cummings not here. Senator Harrison is a yes. Senator Rob Hinsdale? Yes. Uh, if you mind, yes. Okay. So if we are three. One, one. One. And we'll, we'll hope that we can get in because Anne's in the building, it sounds like. Yes. So we can, Wendy is clerk. If you could go grab her before they start. Yes. Yeah. That would be great. Will do. Who's the reporter? Uh, given I carried the water on it, I'm happy to report it. I think um, all the bills should go up right after you see Anne. Um, so yeah, you will to get her to vote right now, you know, um, if she can interrupt what she's doing. So, okay. I, and I just I just want to say I'm sorry we couldn't bring you along, Randy. We made a lot of effort to, at the last minute, include the major concerns that were brought to us. So I'm respect. just frustrated that we that that's where we end up. But there we are. When we look at this next time, we might want to consider having the state do this just to start right. out. The state of Vermont as an employer. The state's a huge employer. I think they do. I I I, I don't. But you know, but, all jobs are not advertised. Some they do, some they do. A yeah. lot of them are, though. Yeah. Some are, but, some are. but, some, but I'm thinking ones that are might be a way to get it going and normalize it, and we could see it from the point of view of an employer. Yeah, but now, if it passes, they'll be doing it. Yes, but I understand we need a lot of uh, uh, rule. We'll have good guidance from the AG, and the and AG's office does, they do this on a regular basis, as we've heard in other bills. Okay. Okay, I think we are all set. Madam Chair, you coming? Are you joining us in the state house? Are you coming? No, no, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, you're going to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Anything else you want to add? No, we just uh, we're gonna have a lot of floor time. Stay tuned for maybe some mild discussions. We're not passing anything this week, but it but we might meet a couple of times. Um, but not tomorrow before, before I don't think. I'll talk to Magali. So, um, I understand it before tomorrow's at 10, so we're not meeting at 9 here. No. That's not my plan. Uh, if I have okay. it, if we have anything on the agenda, I'll move it. Um, we might have an hour or two left of committee time. You, you, We should all get together before, you know, we're officially done to thank Magali, et cetera. Um, so just stay tuned for announcements. But we're not meeting before the floor tomorrow, and I appreciate everyone being here today.